What up, nerds? Welcome back. A very exciting announcement to talk about today, the all-new Sony a7R5. Now, if you tuned into Sony's official announcement, you may have noticed that I am one of the photographers featured in Sony's promo video for the camera, which, in addition to being an enormous honor, means I got to spend an incredible five full days with this camera out in the desert while we filmed our segment. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the camera with me here today as I record this, but I took some serious notes in the field and I got to take a bunch of fun sample shots, so we've got a lot to talk about still. Now, as a quick note, there is no raw support for this camera in any of the editing software yet, um, so let's get started with a few of my favorite sample images I shot with the new A7R5, but please just keep in mind these are edited JPEGs, not the original raw. Now, of course, a bit of a disclaimer, I am a Sony ambassador, obviously, but this is not a paid review. Sony's not paying me to say anything nice about the camera and in fact are not paying me for this review at all. I was just genuinely impressed during my time in the field with it and I thought it might be fun to share that with you. I love to share products that I love and I literally am buying one of these with my actual money to put it in my bag and I wanna tell you why. So, since this review is unpaid, if you like my style, it would mean the world to me if you'd click through one of the links in the description below if you choose to purchase the camera. Those are affiliate links and that will allow me to keep creating new content like this, free and unencumbered by corporate sponsorship. So, with that out of the way, let's dive in. Now, if the only thing you've looked at so far is the resolution of this camera, then this might seem kind of like an incremental upgrade over the a7R4, but there are some incredible new features that make this just a mind-boggling upgrade to the a7R line of cameras. On the outside, the camera looks much like the a7R4 in terms of form factor. However, the screen was given a major upgrade in functionality and is now, for the first time ever on a Sony body, fully articulating. It can flip out and spin around like the a7 IV and the a7S III screens, but it also can tilt up and down like the back screen on the Alpha 1. This is the screen upgrade that I've personally been wanting for years on my Sony cameras, and it will dramatically improve the ease of use with this camera when you're doing difficult compositions and shooting in tight places. Now, perhaps the most exciting part of this upgrade is that the additional axis of articulation means you no longer have to choose between using your ports or using the screen. You can pull the screen fully away from the body of the camera and still rotate it to face in any direction, meaning the ports and port access doors are no longer blocking the screen or vice versa. The screen itself is a 3.2 inch LCD with over 2 million dots of resolution, displaying a full DCI P3 color gamut and also features touch control. The EVF has been upgraded to a 9.44 million dot quad XGA with a refresh rate of 120 frames per second. Incredible if you're a sports or a wildlife action shooter. This camera, much like its predecessors, features dual card slots capable of holding either SD cards or CF Express Type A cards and a dedicated selector dial for stills, video, and SNQ modes. As with all Sony cameras, nearly every dial and button is customizable, and for the a7R5, there are up to 169 functions assignable to 18 different custom keys and dials. In addition, Sony added a new main menu option, allowing you to put your most frequently accessed settings right on the front page to help streamline your shooting. Moving to the inside of the camera, we do find the same 61 megapixel Exmor R back illuminated sensor as the a7R4, but with some major upgrades to the rest of the internals that honestly make this feel like a brand new sensor. So first off, the camera has an entirely new five axis image stabilization system and internal gyroscopes that offer up to eight stops of image stabilization. This is significantly more than any other Sony camera, three stops more than the flagship Alpha One, and it indeed significantly more than any other full frame camera by any manufacturer. If you spent any time with the a7R4, you know that the pixel density on these high resolution sensors means that even subtle camera movements are considerably more noticeable in the final images if you're a pixel peeper. So a massive upgrade like this to the IBIS, in my opinion, is a huge win. On the other side of this sensor, we find a brand new Bions XR processor, which is capable of eight times more processing power than the processor found in the a7R4. 
This additional processing power has massive implications for image quality, yielding two full stops better dynamic range and two full stops better ISO performance. During my time with the camera, I got to shoot in a wide variety of lighting conditions and I was absolutely blown away with how well this camera handled both highly contrasty, high dynamic range scenes, as well as a very impressive low light performance. The a7R IV would honestly never have been my first choice for astrophotography, but uh, I'm honestly gonna have a tough time choosing between this and my A1 for future landscape assignments. This larger processor also comes with a greater image buffer, allowing up to 593 consecutive images to be shot in burst mode. Burst mode on this is 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and seven frames per second with the electronic shutter. Now, perhaps the coolest upgrade for this camera is that in addition to the new Bions XR processor, the A7R5 features an entirely new and separate AI processing unit dedicated entirely to artificial intelligence functions of the camera. So this results in 20% better accuracy with auto exposure, 60% better real-time tracking on human eyes and subjects than ever before, and 40% better autofocus tracking on animals and birds. And it also comes with a much more significant library of detectable subjects than ever before. This new system can now detect heads and bodies, as well as eyes for animals. And animals now includes nearly all animals, not just dogs, cats, birds like we had before. We're talking insects and bears and lions and alpaca and probably like a capybara. The new AI system is so advanced that it can actually track and calculate head and eye motion even when the subject is facing away from the camera or gets blocked by another subject. So the AI processor is also capable of deep learning and will begin to estimate the body position of your subject and anticipate future movements to keep the focus locked in tough situations. This is wildly good news for sports, action, and dance photographers. And then taking that even one step further, Sony has refined the eye detect autofocus to actually lock on the surface of the eye rather than simply focusing on the eye area. Sony also rolled out tons of new subject detection modes for this camera, including insect, airplane, car, and train with options to select specific body parts or location for focusing on each of these subjects. Speaking of focusing systems, the camera will also feature for the first time in a Sony body internal focus stacking options with the ability to focus bracket up to 299 separate images. It also features for the first time an internal bulb exposure option. Bulb exposures used to require an external camera trigger, but the new A7R5 has an internal function allowing single exposures up to 999 seconds in length. Now on the video side, this isn't quite as impressive of a hybrid camera as say the Alpha One, but that's not really much of a surprise since this is much more de designed as a dedicated stills camera. That said, it is still capable of shooting 8K 24P and 4K 60P footage in 422 10-bit with full pixel readout. It also comes with a Super 35 crop mode, which shoots 4K 30P footage. that's actually oversampled at 6.2K and then downscaled to 4K, which makes for just magnificent looking footage. That 6.2K oversampling basically just means that the 4K footage actually has 2.6 times more information per frame than shooting in the full frame 4K, which is really cool. It features 14 stops of dynamic range in video and 16-bit raw output capabilities if you're using an external recording device like the Atomos Ninja. This new AI system also brings with it anti-flicker and high-frequency flicker-free shooting, meaning the camera will analyze the refresh cycle rate of lights in whatever room you're shooting in, and it will automatically vary the shutter speed to minimize and eliminate exposure anomalies, color anomalies, and banding. This variable shutter is also manually controllable down to one-tenth of a second. I personally found this particularly useful for video because I could manually set a 1 48th second shutter to get the 180 degree shutter angle for video, which was not possible in previous Sony cameras. You still can't set a specific shutter angle that will automatically adjust exposure time, commensurate with frame rate like you can on an actual cinema camera. But in my opinion, uh, somebody who does a lot of video on hybrid cameras, this is a fantastic intermediary solution. This camera also features the same magnesium alloy chassis and graphite heat dissipation structure that's inside the A7S III, which is great news and means that this camera can record well past 30 minutes, even in 8K settings. 
So also of note, the camera features a new anti-dust system, which oscillates the sensor at 70,000 cycles per second when the camera powers on in order to shake dust off the sensor. And then it automatically closes the mechanical shutter when the camera is powered off to protect the sensor during lens changes. And if you're like me and you're kind of stupid and you shoot outside a lot, this will, this is kind of a game changer. This is gonna save me a lot of time in the future. Uh, I famously have gotten dust on my sensor and not had a little blower. And then I have tried to blow it off and just spit directly on my sensor. So anything we can do to streamline that process and protect me from myself, I see as an overall win. Another bonus, if you like to do long time lapses or extended video sessions, the a7R5 also has a new USB PD port, which is basically USB-C, but allows fast charging, up to four times faster charging than the a7R4 or the Alpha One. The camera will go on presale Thursday, October 27th at 10 a.m. Eastern time for 3,999 US dollars and will begin shipping in mid-December. Well, that's about all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for being here and watching this review. As always, if you liked this, please click like, drop a comment below, click subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, maybe the algorithm will bless me from above a little bit. Uh, it was great having you here today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around next time.